Get ready to have your brain busted. These super hard riddles are the ultimate challenge for your IQ. You'll have to get through seven riddles, seven ultra tricky riddles. If you can't solve them, just sit back, regroup, and wait for the answer after each one. Your brain will appreciate this amazing workout, and your mind will definitely feel a little bit younger and a little bit sharper after we're done. Think fast, think outside the box, and let's go. The Mailman Mr. Smith's house was robbed. He was found by the police on Monday morning tied to a chair. Here's what the victim said. A criminal broke into my apartment last night, tied me up and stole my wife's jewelry. My wife's away on business right now. I've just been sitting here waiting for help. The policeman said, well, what happened next? Early in the morning, I heard the mailman putting the newspaper through the door. I started screaming like crazy, begging him to call the police. Apparently he heard me and called you guys, thank goodness. The policeman said, Sir, you and your wife are under arrest for false statements. After all, it was she who tied you to the chair. What tipped off the policeman? You have 12 seconds for this first tricky riddle. Your time starts now. The answer? The newspaper slot is located at the bottom of the door, and the newspapers didn't get on the nightstand by themselves. The Businessman Martin has his own business. His office is in the basement. It was okay for now, but he dreamed of having a more fancy office. You know, high up, with big windows, fancy leather couches. One day, Martin came to work oh, no. and found that his safe was empty. He immediately called a detective. The detective interviewed the cleaning lady who was there that morning. She said, I came in early today, but I was in such a big rush, so many offices to clean today. I only managed to wash the windows, and I didn't see any evidence of a break-in. The detective knew she was lying. How? You've got 12 seconds. Your time starts now. The answer? She said she washed the windows, but how could she? The office is in the basement. The friends. John, Carl, Cynthia and Stan went to a bar. Suddenly, John felt sick and lost consciousness. He woke up in a room with a lamp, a TV, and a clock. There was only one door, and it led to a scary, dark corridor. His friends were there too. No one remembered how they ended up there. After a while, the TV turned on. Not normal TV, some kind of pre-recorded message. They learned that they had been abducted, and they were in a maze. There was no light in the maze, and one thing's for sure, they need to find their way out. They found a box of candles and matches in the room. They walked through the labyrinth for five hours, you know, using the candles for light. But no luck. They came back exhausted and decided to sleep for a while. Then Stan said he would go and look for a way out, you know, by himself. He took one candle, lit it, and walked out into the maze. John woke up three hours later. Stan was just coming back. Stan said, I wandered around for three hours and found nothing. John suddenly shouted to everyone, grab him. Why did John freak out and grab Stan? Quick, what's the answer? You've only got 12 seconds and your time starts now. The answer? Stan went out with one candle and he walked for three hours and then came back. The candle couldn't possibly be the same length as when he went out. Stan must be part of the whole kidnapping plan somehow. The bank robber. The police got a call about a bank robbery. 
When they arrived, the bank's manager said that there had been several girls dressed in black masks and gloves. He knew they were female from their long hair and eyelashes. The policeman found scratches on his cheek and asked where he got them from. The manager said that one of the robbers had scratched him with her nails. The policeman immediately realized that the manager was lying. How did he know? Did you hear the vital clue? Your 12 seconds starts now. The answer? The girls were wearing gloves. He said it himself. So they couldn't have scratched the manager. He's hiding something. The models. The police found Rosa unconscious in a hotel room. They interviewed all her friends. They were models from all over the country who had come to Chicago for a contest. Next to her, they found an electric alarm clock pulled out of the socket. A detective asked her friends what they were doing at night. Alessandra said, I played poker with my friends in a restaurant on the ground floor. All my friends and the bartender can vouch for me. I didn't leave the restaurant. G said, Isabella told me she was walking along the corridor at 4 a.m. She noticed that the door of Rosa's room was open. At first, she could only hear the ticking of the alarm clock. Then, suddenly, the clock fell silent, and there was a crash. She hid and noticed Alessandra slipping out of Rosa's room and running towards the stairs. Isabella confirmed G's testimony. The detective said, I think it was you and Isabella in on this together. You committed this crime. How did the detective know? Time to solve the crime. Do you have what it takes? Your 12 seconds starts now. The answer? G's story was a pretty good one, but one small problem. An electric alarm clock doesn't tick, so the whole story must be a lie. The neighbor. One day, the police were called to Mr. Smith's house. They arrived 10 minutes after the call and approached the house. They had to cover their faces with their hands. It was so windy that day. Mr. Smith was found unconscious at a desk in his home office. It was Mr. Smith's neighbor who called the police. The police opened the door of the office and the papers from the table scattered all over the floor. Mr. Smith's neighbor also went into the room. The police said, did you call us? The neighbor said, yeah, Smith and I agreed to watch the match together. I rang the doorbell, he didn't open. Still, the door was unlocked. I mean, it's a pretty safe neighborhood. I went into his house and decided to look for him in his home office. The policeman said, did you touch anything here? I didn't touch anything and I didn't leave the office as you instructed. I think someone climbed through that open window. The policeman looked out of the window. Yeah, there was a flower bed just under the window and there were traces of men's shoes in the dirt. The policeman was sure, though, that the neighbor was lying. How did he know? Can you solve the crime? Well, if you can, you only have 12 seconds. The answer? There was a strong wind that day. So if the neighbor entered the office through the door, like the police, the draft would have blown the papers right off the table. And since they only flew off when the policeman came in, the policeman knew that it was the neighbor who had entered the office through the window. The Thief Matt forgot some important documents at home. He went back for them at 9 a.m. When he entered the house, he heard glass breaking. He saw someone in a mask run out of the back door to a parked red car. Luckily, the robber didn't have time to steal anything. Matt immediately called the police and reported this mysterious red car. But he could only remember part of the plate number. 
31W. The police arrived at the scene five minutes later, and right away, they went out to look for that red car. After 10 minutes of driving around, the policemen saw a similar looking red car. It was parked near a cafe. The policeman went into the cafe and they saw there was only one customer. So the policeman went up to him. Is this your car? What were you doing about 15 to 20 minutes ago? The customer looked around and replied, Yeah, this is my car, but I've been sitting here for over an hour. The detective looked at his watch. It was 9.15 a.m. He immediately arrested the guy. Why? It's the last chance to prove yourself. Your 12 seconds starts now. The answer? The cafe opens at 9, so he couldn't have been sitting there for an hour. So, how many did you solve? Tell me in the comments.